The other important person in this indictment, the other important unnamed person, is Russian government official. Um, he's easier to figure out. He's believed to be Alexander Torshin, a former member of the Russian parliament, currently a senior official in Russia's central bank. He's believed by European prosecutors to have significant ties to Russian organized crime. Uh, he is now sanctioned by the U.S. government, so Mr. Torshin can no longer visit people like Scott Walker in the United States. Um, but prosecutors essentially accuse Maria Butina of acting at his direction secretly in this country. And they've provided a lot of evidence of their interactions. Some of the evidence that we know of their interactions, though, is just on public-facing social media. Like this photo of them, for example, together. This is from Maria Butina's Facebook page. Mr. Torshin himself also maintains a robust presence on Twitter, which gives us all lots to go through, uh, including this rather remarkable post from July 6, 2016, in which Mr. Torshin shows these pictures of a medal that he says he received that day from the FSB, the Russian spy agency. I mean, this guy is supposedly somebody who works at the Russian Central Bank. Why did the FSB give him a medal for his work, a medal of appreciation, right after Donald Trump clinched the Republican nomination for president? I don't know why the FSB gave him a medal. But here's, here's just one last thing to chew on here. In the case against Maria Butina, this, who's accused of being a secret federal agent working for Torshin here on this Russian influence operation in the U.S. One of the things we learned in the charging documents in her case is how she spent election night 2016. According to online conversations the FBI says it obtained, just a couple of hours after the presidential election was called for Trump, Maria Butina and Torshin discussed online who Trump was going to nominate as Secretary of State. And just a couple days later, according to the FBI, quote, Bettina sent Torshin a direct message via Twitter in which she predicted who might be named Secretary of State. She, quote, asked Torshin to find out how our people felt about that potential nomination. Here's why that should jump out at you and why we should take a moment to consider why federal prosecutors might have put that conversation in particular in this public charging document. In March, Jane Mayer at The New Yorker published a uh, profile of Christopher Steele, very famous person now, right? Former British intelligence officer whose memos on the alleged collusion between the Trump campaign and Russia became uh, the infamous Steele dossier. One little bombshell on that article from Jane Mayer was that in addition to the dossier of Christopher Steele's memos that BuzzFeed published last January and we all saw, there was also a previously unknown, previously unreported additional memo that Christopher Steele wrote after the election. Quote, one subject that Steele is believed to have discussed with special counsel Robert Mueller's investigators is a memo that he wrote in late November 2016 after his contract with Fusion had ended. This memo, which did not surface publicly with the others, is shorter than the rest. It's based on one source described as a senior Russian official. That official said he was merely relaying talks circulating in the Russian Ministry of Foreign Affairs. But what he had heard was astonishing. People were saying that the Kremlin had intervened to block Trump's initial choice for Secretary of State, Mitt Romney. So Jane Mayer published that scoop a few months ago. A couple days later, the Wall Street Journal published this report showing that during that same period, right after the election, November 2016, quote, Russian-backed on online trolls flooded social media to try to block Mitt Romney from getting the Secretary of State job. Quote, several of the most popular accounts linked to a pro-Kremlin propaganda agency slammed the former Massachusetts governor, encouraging their tens of thousands of followers to take action. All right, so we all know how this story ends, right? Of course, Trump picked as his secretary of state, not Mitt Romney, but out of nowhere, the Exxon CEO, Rex Tillerson, to whom Vladimir Putin had personally awarded the Russian Order of Friendship uh, in honor of all the big oil deals they had signed together. Tillerson is someone who Trump had never met before the presidential election. He'd never had any dealings with. Where did he come up with that as a choice for his secretary of state? The Russian trolls who were so up in arms about the prospect that Romney might be the choice, they were publicly delighted when Trump instead picked this guy he'd never met before, when he picked Rex Tillerson. The idea that a foreign adversary may have exercised some kind of veto power over our president's cabinet choices, that is an explosive allegation, right? That's not affecting the election, that's affecting the conduct of the US government after the election. At this point, we have potential evidence that that may have happened, and it comes from several different sources, including now a federal indictment. I mean, there's the, the medal that Russian official number one from the latest indictment got from the FSB when Trump got the nomination. 
There's also the medal that Russian President Vladimir Putin gave Trump's surprise pick for Secretary of State. Right after Russian official won, an accused Russian spy, Maria Butina, talked about checking out whether Trump's choice for Secretary of State was okay with our people. I mean, that seems like something that probably warrants looking into. Did Russia not just help elect Donald Trump? Did they pick the cabinet? And if Republicans in Congress, who are professing to be so stunned and puzzled and concerned by Trump's behavior in Helsinki this week, if they were genuinely interested in uncovering exactly what has gone on between Trump and Russia, what the extent is of Russian involvement in our democracy, this is exactly the sort of thing they could hold hearings on if they wanted to. And a lot of other things besides. Ambassador Michael McFaul joins us next. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.